Hey everybody, it's Joe G from the new 8-Bit Heroes. Thanks for checking out this video about NES Maker, the tool set that we built to create actual hardware playable cartridge-based NES games without ever having to write a line of code. Today we're going to look at how to add more assets to our game. We're going to look at, we, we, we looked at how to add um, walkable tiles and how to add solid tiles, how to draw some graphics. And today we're going to actually really dive into, you know, how to create different types of assets that are interactive for your player in the game. Uh, the first step is we need to draw some new things. I'm going to make uh, some hurt tiles. I went ahead and I made a graphic by editing a blank spot. I'm going to make them gray and I'm going to call them spikes. And before I save it, I'm going to give them a tile type right here. And these are just ones that we created for this game already. And a lot of these are going to come, you know, bundled as, as sort of defaults uh, with Nest Maker. But the, the cool thing is, is that you can write your own or if, if somebody else is good in assembly can, can write how tiles operate. Um, you'll be able to easily sort of inject them into what you want the tile to do. Uh, but I can't, I can't imagine you needing much more than what we're going to already sort of have provided. So if I wanted this to hurt you, I could use hurt. So now it's, so the spikes are going to use a hurt tile. I'm going to save it and you're going to see it appeared in my asset list. Okay. So now if I go to overworld, and I click on the screen that I started to create, you see spikes is now an option. And I can go ahead and put spikes into the game. Um, and just a couple things to note, if I mouse over these tiles, if you look up here at the top of the screen, it's telling you what these tiles actually do. Um, there are some keyboard shortcuts that you can actually write different uh, uh, collision data over the top of what's there. If you wanted like this to be a secret set of spikes and didn't want to create a whole asset for it, um, or maybe this one here is secretly walkable, I can make this secretly walkable, even though it looks like spikes without having to make a whole new asset that looks like spikes and is walkable. Anyway, so now that you, you can see how easy it is to sort of lay out these new assets that will hurt me, I'm going to test the game. And when I test the game right now, it's going to use the default Mystic Searches sprites, the default Mystic Searches start screen. Um, obviously, you'll be able to customize your start screen, your HUD, your sprites, all that stuff. Uh, we're going to get to that in another tutorial. But for now, let's just use the, the Mystic Searches stuff to see how these solid objects work and how these spikes work. So I'm going to go to test and go to export and test. What happens when I go to export and test is that it actually opens up the assembler in the background. Give it a second. Um, it's going to open up the assembler in the background and it's going to assemble all the changes that I did. It's going to compile all the changes I just made to this game uh, and assemble it into a file that is essentially an SROM and could easily be flashed. You can see it's already done. Hit any key to continue. And it's going to open it up in a custom emulator that actually Shiru wrote for us. Um, but you can actually... Um, choose to open it up in any emulator that you want. So again, these are the Mystic Searches sort of default start screens, and that's the Mystic Searches character. Um, so now if I try and walk into a solid object, you see I can't walk any further. If I try and work, walk into a hurt tile, you can see it hurts me, right? So What's actually happening is every time that there's a collision, it's reading what type of tile that your uh, four point collision detection is seeing. And it's, let's take a look at what's actually happening. So if I go into uh, routines and I look at tile collision routines, um, that is a hurt tile, which if I look back at the tile, it is type zero, one, two, three, four, five. It's the fifth type of tile. So what it's actually doing is going to be in tile type five. And if I open this, this is actually the assembly data that's happening when that collision happens. Um, and again, you could edit this and tweak this and change this. Um, and you can, add, in fact, you can you could change what these are called in the engine by manipulating, whoops, by manipulating this file here you change the graphic asset list the reason that it's called hurt in the tile in the uh, in the tool is because here's my tile type zero one two three four five hurt so i could change this to call it anything i want whatever i change that to is what it's going to be called here the, the main thing to to worry about is it's going to activate the oops, it's going to activate 
tile type five because I've chosen tile type zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, we're going to prepackage a lot of you know, general common types of tiles that you would need for the different genres of games that you might build. Um, so you're not really going to have to think about that. Let's just add another one for kicks. Um, and while we're at it, I'm going to show you how we can do pathing in this game. So one of the things that we did to conserve space is we made meta tiles. Essentially, the NES can can create uh, tiles on an 8x8 eight eight grid, not a 16x16 16 16 grid. But to save data, we wanted to be able to define those tiles on a 16x16 16 16 grid, um, which allows us to have four times as many uh, screens, basically, in the game, four times as, as much data. But there are some things that we want more control over, more fine control over, and we call those things paths. So these are the paths that are default loaded right now. Um, and what I could do is I could make, let's say I wanted, uh, I, I, there's, there's different paths I could select. Um, so here's the other set that goes with this, this, this um, graphics bank. Um, and let's say I wanted to keep number seven, this dirt path here. Um, and that's it. I'll make one, two, and three, and seven. So it, you can see what it's doing. It's it's allowing me to choose. I want this to be stone walkway, and its collision type to be normal. I want this to be water, and I want its collision type to be shallow water. Uh, I want this to be a fence, and I can make it a brown fence, and I want to make it solid. And I want this. Let's see what looks better. Yeah, I like that better. I'm going to make this a hole, which will take me to the screen underground. And let's call this Area 1 Paths 1. Now, I could give it a better name. Like, I don't know, if I wanted to, I'd call it Grassland Paths 1. You can call it whatever you want. Um, I'm going to save it. And now I can see I've got Grassland Paths. I can pull it back up and change it. If I go to my overworld, how I add paths is if, if I hold down the one... Uh, at first, I actually have to set it. So I'd go into screen info. And I'd say, what path do you want to use? I want to use grassland paths. If I hold down the one key, it's going to draw this path. If I hold down the two key, it's going to hold, draw on this path. If I hold down the three key, it'll draw this path. And the four key will draw this path. So I'm going to hold down the one button, the one key right now. And, it's aut and I'm just dragging my mouse around. And you can see it's automatically sort of updating the path depending uh, the graphic depending on what it should be in that space uh, compared to what's around it if i hold down the two key which i think was a fence right yeah you can see i can make a solid fenced area three was a hole in the ground and four was this sort of walking path like this. So now if I test the game, there's going to be a couple things. This is going to be solid. This is going to be a hurt tile. And this is going to be shallow water. So um, I could look over here in this folder. Um, and I could look at shallow water. I think it's eight. And that, that basically determines what shallow water does. For me, it sinks you down halfway and you can't jump when you're in shallow water. Uh, that's how Myst that's what that's what we needed for mystic searches. So let's take a look. I'm gonna export and test. Opens in our emulator. And you can see the changes that have taken effect. If I go in the water, you can see I sink into the water. And if I walk into the fence, I can't move past the fence. Um, and hurt tiles hurt me and solid tiles are solid. All right, so that's how to add new tiles and add paths and uh, different tile types to the screen. Uh, you've kind of got you've kind of got to see how easy it is to compile and how sort of intuitive we're making things that there are things that are going to be that that users are going to want to change without digging into the major, engine and, and screwing up the major engine like what happens when you run into a tile so we're, make, we're exposing those to make them really easy to change or you know hopefully what ends up happening is people come together and say oh how would i do this you know on a on a, on a forum uh and people can help write routines that will work uh and you could just paste them into what tile type zero does and and sure enough when you run into tile zero um that would happen Lastly, I would just like to show you guys this uh, running in an actual NES emulator. Here's FCEUX. 
and let's find the ROM. We're going to open the ROM file. Uh, this is in a Nest Tutorials, and the ROM file is right here. So here it is actually running in FCEUX. You can see it looks the same as in our emulator. There are a couple of slight differences. Um, so we want you to be able to use the emulator of your choice. So that's a look at how to create tiles, how to create paths, how, how to create different types of assets. And it shows it actually playing in our custom emulator as well as FCEUX. Uh, next time, we're, we're going to be looking at how to create some, some objects, some monsters, some, some things that are moving around the screen to interact with. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos about Nest Maker and how to create your own NES games, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and help us get the word out further by sharing this video on social media.